Hi, my name is Umberto and I'm the co-founder of Rose. Today, I'm going to show you how to build your first cohort model. A cohort is just a group of people that share the same characteristic. Usually, the time that uh, someone did an interaction. Uh, so let's take an example of an e-commerce company. Uh, a cohort might be the time of the first purchase so that you can track across time what those people did. That's exactly the example that we're going to do here. Let me just go over to this spreadsheet that I pre-prepared and uh, I'm just going to edit it. And you will see that I already have uh, some sale data in here, uh, but I have to compute these extra columns, the month of the sale for the date, the month of the cohort, so the month of the first purchase, months elapsed between the first purchase and the number of the purchase in the month. So to compute the month of the sale, I'm just going to post all the dates to the first of the month, right? I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to pick the year uh, of the date and the month of the date and one, right? So we, if we post it to the first of the month, then then uh, we have all of the purchases in the same month uh, with the same date. Now we have to find the month of the cohort. Just going to use our XY lookup function that finds a particular row and a column, a cell that matches a particular row and column within a range. So I'm just going to select uh, this table right in here. And I'm going to be looking for uh, this particular, the same person that we are in the same row, but I'm going to look for um, the month of sale. So what is it going to do? It is going to go over all of this whole table uh, and it's going to find the first occurrence of, of each person for each row, right? So for 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 John, the first occurrence was, was this particular uh, row, which again, the month of sale is that one. But now if you pull it down, you will see that, for example, John made another purchase uh, uh, on the 10th of January, and it still finds that his first purchase was in January, but he made also purchase in February, right? And the month of the sale is February, but the month of the cohort is still January because John bought for the first time in January. So this is working well, and the table extends. That's why we used the little uh, uh, dollar signs there to lock the rows and columns. Now for months elapsed, can use another function in the spreadsheet, which is called diff. Right? Diff calculates the difference between two, say, two, two, two dates. So I'm going to calculate the difference between the month of the cohort and the month of sale, and I'm going to use the units of month. Oh, there's a mistake here. Uh, I think that I didn't select the, the date diff, exactly. Date diff. Uh, and from the cohort to the month of sale, and the unit that I want to track is uh, um, month. So now, obviously, this happened in the month zero because zero months have elapsed from the first month of the first purchase. Now, if you pull it down, you will start seeing ones and twos in there. So I think it is correct. And lastly, we want to compute what is the number of the purchase that is user that that this client did on this particular month. So I'm just going to use account diffs here, right? And I'm going to count. Uh, uh, the number of times right, that John appeared within this particular month of sale where right, this is it uh, uh, where, where, where he did a purchase, right? And now so I'm just going to lock in the the range so that was his first purchase in a month but now if you pull it down you'll see that that was his second purchase in a month now if you pull it down until john buys again in february that was again his first purchase and then second purchase in february and this is correct as well right now we that now that we have this table uh with with support columns we can go ahead and start building our actual cohort tables which are these much much more informative tables right so in here what we want to do is we want to plot the cohort, so uh, uh, everyone who belongs to this cohort, and then how did they behave in their respective month zero, month one, month two, month three, month four. So all I need to do is account ifs, right? And I'm gonna count in 
all of the people for whose month of cohort right, is this one and whose month elapsed is that one, right? And whose purchase was the first one, right? Because I don't want, if someone bought multiple times, I don't want to double count them. I just want to count people, not orders, right? I'm just going to lock that. I'm going to lock in uh, column A so that we this, this cell slides down and when, when I copy paste it. I'm going to lock in the first row for that same purpose on the header. Now, if I pull it down, you will see that this generates this little triangle right with, with the behavior. So there were five people uh, who belong to this cohort, to the cohort of January, right? So they bought five times on their month zero. Uh, so five of them came on month zero, but then only three of them came back in month one and three or month two. So you can actually visualize how they behave, right? But, but then this is not really fair because January you acquired more users. So most likely you will want to do this exact same table, but in relative terms, so in percentage terms. So all we're going to do is divide uh, that number that we already had by the number of people in month zero, which is the size of the cohort, right? So we're just going to go in here and replace that B1 with a zero, right? And now when you pull it down, you will see that these fractional numbers appear. Let's format this as a percentage. And we move these uh, annoying little decimals, right? And now I'm just going to delete these values for better re readability. Now you can actually see how each cohort, irrespective of the size, behave across time, right? Uh, and, and we can even plot it. This chart is already feeding on that data, right? Just feeding on that data. And you can see that the, the hottest colors are the most recent cohorts. So these ones, these uh, represent this under this point. And these two are the second line, which is orange, etc. So you can see that generally it seems like cohorts are improving, even though there's a little point in there that seems to be an outlier that actually is worse than even uh, fainter lines, which are in the past, which were better than it. Right? The last type of, of cohort, which we can do uh, uh, for, for this introduction, is actually plotted with real months. If you remember correctly, in here we plotted with relative months elapsed, right? So month zero, month one, month two, month three, month four, which is amazing to see the progression uh, and see them side by, uh, side by side, the different cohorts, and actually see if they are better than others. But we might want to actually stack them according to real months, which we're going to do here. We're just going to do it again. So count ifs, I'm going to count everyone uh, whose cohort was that and whose real month of sale was that month, right? And I will also want to do the number of purchases in the month is the first one, right? I'm just going to lock it very quickly. And now if I pull it down, you will see that the data is exactly the same as we had on the first table, but instead uh, of being this triangle, right? It's still five, three, 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 two, but the data is stacked uh, aligned to the right, right? Because these are real months. And what this means is that you can actually look at a given month, a real month in May, you can see where sales came from. Two of those sales came from January, the people from Gen who bought from the first time in January. One sale came from the people who the people who bought from the first time for the first time in February, one from March, one from April, and one from May. And if you stack it, you can actually see the rent which you get from each cohort, right? So this this cohort of January is still a pretty nice contribution, even in May. Right. And this is what you what what you can do cohorts. There's a lot more stuff. And you can find all of this stuff uh, uh, linked in our in our uh, files at, at rose.com. Thank you very much.